creature makes his way to Geneva as he walks, stows away on back of carriages and makes his way through woods till he sees a mountain. He climbs all the way to the top. From the top of the mountain he sees Switzerland making his way all the way down the mountain he arrives in Geneva meanwhile back at the Frankenstein estate joy is in the air as they prepare for the wedding of Victor and Elizabeth oh isn't this exciting said William my big brother is finally marrying the woman he loves Yes, William, I am. Do excuse me, though. I have a few things to arrange. Of course. William then sees Elizabeth, and they have a good old chat. He then tells her that he is going to take a stroll, get some fresh air. As he's walking along, he stumbles into the woods where he walks around. He opens his locket that he has around him, looking at a painting picture of his mother and Victor in the other side, and their father too. Making his way around, he decides to stroll through the woods, where he hears music playing from a recorder. He follows the sound and there he sees the creature playing. The creature then notices William and stops playing. William then says, what, what is this? Who are you? Hold on, is that my brother's coat? Your brother's coat, said the creation. Yes, and Recognising a book, he says, This is my brother's journal. Your brother, Victor Frankenstein, said the creature. Yes, how do you know him? How do I know him? He is the one that made me. What are you talking about? said William. He made me out of dead people. William then realises, oh good God, Elizabeth told me that he had some work he was doing, but never did I imagine it would be this. What are you? I am just a creation, rejected by the man that made me as I found in this journal. You are his brother, yes? Yes, I am his brother. What do you want? Step back as the monster approached him. No, I want revenge on Victor Frankenstein. Will you won't get it, said William. I have a right mind to report you now to the authorities. No, don't. Yes, as William ran, the creature chased him. Running through the woods, he then stumbles upon a brock and falls over. There, the creature stands above him, saying, Please, don't... The creature then grabs William by the throat, crushing his neck, killing him. He then takes William's locket that he notices he has around his neck and opens it, seeing four, three small portrait paintings of Baron Frankenstein, their mother and Victor. The creature then has a flashback to the night he was born, remembering Frankenstein's face in terror. He then goes on his merry way. Later, Elizabeth asks Justine, Have you seen William around? No, I haven't. They then ask Victor, 
and he says that he has not seen William. Victor then asks Igor if he has seen William. Igor says, No, I haven't, Victor. By last I saw he went to talk with Elizabeth. Everyone then searches the grounds and find no one. Worrying even more of William's disappearance, Baron Frankenstein worries, saying, Oh dear, I'd fear something might have happened to your brother, Victor. Oh, calm down, father. He is old enough and independent to take care of himself. He probably just got lost. We'll spread out a search party. We'll find him. The search then began. They looked around the woods for the village, finding no look and no one. Justine running around shouting with Ian. Exhausted and with a storm brewing, she then takes refuge in an abandoned barn where she lays down and rests. While she sleeps, the creature sees her. He then takes the locket he took from William and places it on her. Then, later on, as Victor returns home, he says to some of the keep some of the groundskeepers. So, we've searched the grounds once again, still no sign of him. Then, Victor sees Elizabeth and a small group of people carrying a body, Elizabeth in pieces and saddened by what's happened. Victor then says, Elizabeth, what is it? What's going on? Victor, as she was in tears, it's William. Victor then goes up to the men who have the body covered up, begging him not to look. He moves the blankets and sees William laying lifeless, with his neck crushed. He then weeps in grief. As for Baron Frankenstein, he retreats into himself with great sadness refusing to accept that his youngest son, William, is now dead. Then, Victor asks, Where is Justine? Elizabeth says she went off on her own to look for him, to cover more ground, but she hasn't come back yet. Then, a policeman arrives, saying, what is it? We found the person responsible for your brother's death. Who is it? It is Justine. Wait, what do you mean? She is... Well, when we found her, she had this with her. The policeman shows Victor the locket. St. William's locket. But no, she can't have done that. My brother was killed by strangulation... Surely she can't have done this. I mean, she hasn't got the strength to crush his neck. I'm sorry, but she's already been arrested. And, well, it's not a pretty sight. Victor and Elizabeth then hurry to the village. An angry mob goes to the station and takes Justine out of her cell trying to fight his way through the angry mob. The crowd of people take a noose by her neck and drop her as she hangs, unable to save her. Victor hugs and comforts Elizabeth. Later on, as the crowd calms down and Victor returns back to the estate, one of the groundskeepers say to Victor, I yeah, know it can't have been her. She cared for William. I like to think that she might have cared about him. She didn't do this. We'll take her body and bury it in the morning. Of course. 
I think we should all just turn in for the night. It's been one eventful day. Everyone then goes back inside. As Victor is about to retreat back to his mansion, the creature grabs him by the shoulder, saying to him, The woods, tomorrow, meet me there. Victor looks in horror as he sees the creature in a flash of lightning. Then, the next morning, Victor prepares a pistol and climbs onto a horse. Elizabeth saying, Victor, please tell me what is going on. I know who killed William. Then you must alert the authorities. No, Elizabeth. This is something I have to do myself. What is it, Victor? Victor then climbs off the horse and goes up to Igor, talking to him quietly, saying, It's the creature that I created. It's still alive. It's alive. It's still alive? But that was months ago since you made that creature. I know. God really knows what it wants. But I know it killed William and I'm going to make it pay. At least let me come with you, Victor. No, I must come alone. Stay here and make sure everyone's okay. You're a good friend, Igor. Well, you helped me when I needed help and I wasn't even asking. I am indebted to you, Victor Frankenstein. Yes, well, I must go and do this now. Victor climbs back onto the horse and makes his way to the woods, as the monster instructed. He climbs off the horse and ties the horse to a tree. Arming himself with the pistol, he looks around. He then says, Where are you? I'm here, as you said. Come out and face me. The creature then comes out from behind a tree and smothers Frankenstein, knocking him unconscious. Later, as he regains consciousness, he wakes up in a cave where there's a fire. Without his pistol, he then sees the creature sitting on the other side of a fire that it's made. He then says, Relax. If I wanted you dead, I would have killed you already. You killed my brother, and you framed Justine for it. Yes, I did, said the creature. I have experienced things. Emotions that you never told me how they work. You know, when I killed William, when I crushed his throat, I felt a sense of power. And in that moment, I had the power to decide if he lives or dies. I'm thinking, did you have a sense of power like that when you made me, deciding if I should be alive or not? You are an abomination. I know. I read your journal. You learnt to read. I can read. I can talk. I can think. I looked in your journal and I am made of six or seven men. Whose these hands belong to before I had them? A hand from each of a different man. My brain... I have vivid memories of other people. Memories that aren't mine, but of those who were before me. I am just a combination of thieves and murderers, evil stitched to evil. And then you made me, and then you rejected me. Did you not once consider the consequences of your actions, Victor Frankenstein? Father, do not call me father. I am not your father. You gave me life. Tell me, do I have a soul? 
I don't know, said Victor. You don't know? <laughs> Did you not once think you've tampered with things that man shouldn't tamper with? Yes, I did. That's why I needed to terminate everything. I didn't know you could survive. How have you survived? Well, apparently in the winter people feel cold and in the summer they feel warm. I don't feel any of that. What I do feel, though, is emotions, strength. Sometimes pain, but not enough to feel. But I can feel a lot of things. What do you want? said Victor. What do I want? I want a friend. A friend? Yes. A companion. A female of me. You don't know what you're asking, said Victor. I think I do know what I'm asking, said the creature. Do this for me. You made me... You can do it again. Please, why should I do this for you? You killed my brother. God only knows what you're capable of. It is your doing. You didn't teach me how to control myself, how to deal with grief and pain. Every life that I took, every life that I take, their blood is on your hands. You will do this for me. Make me a mate, a bride. And I promise that I will take her to the ends of the earth. And you will never see me again. I'll leave you to live your life however you wish. I give you my word, Victor Frankenstein. You owe me this for everything you've done. Victor then looks in great reluctance and then says, If this writes this wrong, then I will do it. Thank you, Victor Frankenstein, as the monster smiles. <laughs>